Okay, welcome back for another episode. As ever, I'm Jake from Biceps and Banter. Back again, giving you more of the actual fitness advice that you need. No gimmicks, no fads, simple, effective fitness and nutrition advice that helps you focus on what actually matters for making a change. And if that's the sort of stuff for you, then go and subscribe to the channel and hit a like on the video. It'll help you stay up to date with all the content that I put out. Okay, so today we are gonna be talking about calorie tracking. I'm gonna be giving you my opinions on whether calorie tracking is a good or a bad thing when it comes to helping with fat loss and how it compares to all these other different dieting methods that you see thrown about that you've probably even tried over the years as well. And we're gonna be talking about the clip from a recent podcast episode that had coaches just like myself all in uproar about what was said on it with regards to calorie tracking. And I'm also gonna be taking you through my recent pull session as well. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly what my pull training looks like, what's involved in my session and how that went down. So we're gonna be going through all that in today's episode. So let's get into it. Okay, so it's no secret that there are tons of different dieting methods out there and there are tons of people selling their own methods and their own strategies and versions of what they believe to be the best thing. Now, any coach worth their salt will tell you that there is no one superior method. They all work, like whether it's tracking calories, whether it's keto, whether it's fasting, Whatever it is, they all work because they actually all fall under the same goal, which is to put you in a calorie deficit. They just all do it in different ways. So recently there was a guest on the Diary of a CEO with Stephen Bartlett called Tim Spector. Now he went on and gave his opinion around calorie tracking. So I'm gonna play the clip now in case you haven't seen it. View on calorie counting and this idea that we can, you know, weight loss or being healthy is just about having a calorie deficit. It's complete nonsense. There's never been any long-term study showing that calorie counting is an effective way to lose weight and maintain weight loss after the, you know, the first few weeks. So yes, very strict calorie counting. If you deprive yourself for a few weeks, you will lose some weight. But even if you're successful, your body's evolutionary mechanisms will make you hungry and hungrier every week you go by where you're depriving yourself of energy your body will go into sort of shutdown mode, your metabolism slows down, so you're not expending those calories. And inevitably, I'd say more than 95% of people will go back to their baseline and many go above it. They sort of rebound back if they're doing this, this style of calorie restriction. Okay, so you can sort of see what I'm saying here. It's basically saying that calorie tracking doesn't work. It causes more weight regain. It causes your body to shut down and it's a bit of a waste of time. There's no research backing it. And I completely disagree with what he's saying here. Now I can respect that Tim Spector has published many articles and he's quite a well-known person in the field, but it's no coincidence that he's bringing out these opinions at the same time that he's also got a new book out with his own new dieting method. It doesn't take a genius to work out his potential bias towards why he would think a certain way. Book sales. But there's three main things in what he's just said that I think are completely wrong. The first thing being where he says there's no evidence to support that tracking your calories helps with long-term weight loss. That is just completely false. There are tons and tons of studies that have looked at the effect of tracking your calories and a caloric restriction on weight loss, on fat loss, and how effective that is. And it has been shown time and time and time again through various different methods to be a very, very effective way. And not only that, but one of the more sustainable and adherent ways of losing body fat or body weight. The second point he made was around metabolic adaptation. So he said, as you're dieting for longer and longer, your body starts to shut down and you burn less calories. This is actually true, okay? So as, you, as you're dieting more and more, your body doesn't like that change and it doesn't like the dieting process. It will begin to slowly reduce your metabolism and it will start to downregulate certain systems that aren't essential for survival so that it can conserve as much energy as it possibly can to try and prevent any further weight loss. That is true. However, there are really simple and easy ways around this. It's not as though you can't do anything about it. This is where we use things like refeed days. We use things like higher carb days to try and help give your body a little bit more food intermittently to help reduce these things. And also, the effect that it has on your result in BMR, whilst it does reduce the amount of calories you burn day to day at rest, it isn't by a hugely significant amount. And actually, if you're tracking and consistent and organized with things like your step count, 
you can just make sure that you're moving a little bit more during those times to help burn a few more calories and keep your progress going at the same rate. So whilst what he said there is technically true, it's not as though there isn't anything you can do about it and it's not as though it's... And the third thing he said, which I completely disagree with, is he said that about 95% of people after tracking calories a few years down the line regain the weight that they initially lost and then some. Now he is referencing a meta-analysis study that was done on a wide range of studies that looked at varying different dieting methods and the long-term weight loss that people experienced one, two, and three years down the line. And this study actually showed that one year down the line, 85% of people regained the weight they initially lost, two years, 90%, and three years, 95%, meaning it gave dieting a 5% success rate. However, this study was not solely looking at tracking your calories, it was looking at a varying amount of different dieting methods. There were loads of different methods inside of that that people had followed, such as fasting, such as keto, such as low-fat diets, all kinds of different things. And it was compiling all of their results to look at the effect, long-term effectiveness of dieting methods and whether people keep that weight off. So the statistic that he's talking about here isn't actually directly talking about tracking calories itself. It's in and amongst a wide range of different methods. And in my experience, calorie tracking is actually one of the most, if not the most successful out of those for long-term adherence because of how much education it gives you around your own nutrition, how much understanding it gives you around portion control and food density and macronutrients, as opposed to just blindly following some random system where you have to eliminate certain foods, but you don't really know why. And it's usually things that you enjoy and after a while you tend to want to eat them again. And then when you do, you eat a little bit too much. I'm not saying tracking calories is perfect, and I'm not saying that once you lose weight, you'll never regain it, but it does offer a much more informative and educational side to it that is gonna help you with keeping that weight off long-term. So those are my thoughts on that specific video. Like I said, I don't agree at all with what he was saying. So we're gonna dive into a little bit more detail around these different dieting methods and what is the difference between keto, intermittent fasting, tracking calories, and everything like that, and actually what they all just have in common. But before we do that, I'm gonna to head to the gym and we're gonna go through my pull work. Out. So I'm going to get ready to go. I'm going to drive over and then we're going to go through my pull session. Okay, we've just pulled up uh, to the gym. It's going to be a, a pull session today, uh, a deadlift day with training with Rob. So we're going to try to get as much footage as we can, see how the deadlifts go. Deadlifts are something that for me, I pulled out of my training for like three to five years because they just didn't feel good. I got back pain. I wasn't progressing and I've only recently in the last six months worked them back in and they've actually started to move again. We've made some tweaks to how I've been performing them and I actually don't really get any back pain doing them anymore, which is great. So I'm actually starting to enjoy the list again. So we're going to go in. We're going to see what we can do. We've got some targets to hit and we'll go from there. <laughs>
before the storm You know what's coming, so be warned You can't stop me now Okay, so that was pull. Not the best workout I've ever had, but it wasn't a bad one as well. I'm literally coming off the back of being ill for a couple of weeks over Christmas, not eating quite as much. So my sort of strength and energy for the sessions for, for, for this week really isn't where it was about a month ago. It's sort of slowly building back up as my body's getting back to normal. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, those sessions will just continue to get better and better and better, back up to a level that I'm happy with. Anyway, I wanted to jump into the difference between these different dieting methods and actually what the similarity is. Because no doubt you'll have tried loads of different methods over the years, probably slimming world, probably keto, probably low carb diets, probably fasting, all in effort to try and lose body fat. But the thing is, all of these different methods, regardless of what they tell you to avoid or eliminate or what rules you have to follow, they all have the same objective. And that is literally to put you in a calorie deficit. That's all they do, whether you're cutting fats out your diet completely, which means you're suddenly eating a lot less calories, whether you're cutting carbohydrates out your diet completely. Again, typically carbohydrates are something that people overconsume massively. If you suddenly cut them out your diet, more than likely you're gonna be in a calorie deficit, which means you're gonna be losing a little bit of body fat. Intermittent fasting. You might be someone who eats quite a large breakfast or snacks quite a lot in the evening when you're sat watching TV before you go to bed. If you suddenly have a strict window where you can only eat between certain times and it eliminates that big breakfast that you normally have and it eliminates the opportunity for you to snack in the evening, that's a ton of calories completely out the window that again is probably going to put you into a calorie deficit. Or even Slimming World, even though they follow some crazy sin-based scheme. The point of that is to actually stop you from eating the more calorie dense foods, things that are typically high in fats they tend to assign high sin values to, is to stop you eating those things and to keep you only eating stuff that is very low in calories, again to put you into a calorie deficit. And all those different methods that I've just mentioned, they all achieve the exact same goal of putting you in a calorie deficit, just like tracking your calories would do. So in my opinion, instead of following some weird rules, instead of following some weird eliminations, instead of not really understanding the why behind you're doing these things, but just blindly following them and hoping that it's gonna work, when you know that what they're all actually doing is just putting you into a calorie deficit, it makes more sense to spend just a bit of time learning what calories are and starting to just track your calories and putting yourself into a calorie deficit by still eating some foods that you enjoy because it is perfectly possible to do. This is where tracking calories for me is gonna be a more favorable method for most people because it's gonna educate them as to the calorie contents and macronutrient contents, protein, carbs, and fats of different foods. It's gonna educate them to the amount of calories that are in the foods that they're normally eating and whether or not they should be reducing those or keeping them in or taking them out. 
It's going to educate them on the kind of portion sizes that they need to be looking at for their meals and how big those meals should be. It's going to help them learn how to eat meals out and how to have a glass of wine or a drink or whatever it is while still staying in their calorie target and achieving fat loss. It basically just educates you so much more so that in the long term, you've got a greater understanding and you've got more control over your food consumption, over your calorie consumption, and over your body composition. Now, that isn't me saying that everybody should track calories because they shouldn't. Some people, it just isn't going to work in this point, from a point of view of they just won't enjoy it. It'll feel like an effort and they just won't have any motivation to stick to it and they'd rather just be given a black and white plan without having to think about anything. For some people, that might work. They might be more suited to a meal plan. They might even be more suited to something like keto or fasting where they can eat whatever they want. They don't have to track it. They just have to do it within a certain time. My point is it's all dependent on you and it's dependent on what suits you what you actually enjoy and what you think that you can sustain. Now, don't get me wrong, a diet shouldn't be, there's so much talk around sustainable dieting, but realistically, if a diet was sustainable, at some point it'd become very, very bad for you because there'd be nothing left of you. You don't need a diet to be sustainable, but what you do need is the methods that you use to diet to be adaptable enough so that once you've got the result that you want, you can adjust those methods to now suit more of a maintenance period, to now adjust it so that you can take those skills and the methods that you've used to lose the weight and you can adjust them so that you can now use them to maintain that weight loss. And this is where a lot of methods fall down because if you lose a lot of weight completely cutting out carbs, the second you get to a point where you're happy and you no longer want to lose more weight, you can't just reintroduce all those carbs that you've cut out because you're just gonna regain all the weight that you've lost. And for me, this is where calorie tracking becomes a little bit more advantageous because what you can now do is take the methods that you've used, understanding your calories, understanding your macros, keeping yourself in control with your calorie intake, and once you get to a point where you're happy with your fat loss, you can then literally just increase your calories bit by bit until you get to a point where you're maintaining your new body weight, you're feeling healthy, you're feeling good, and you're not hungry or anything like that. So it's not that it's a sustainable dieting method, it's that it's an adaptable dieting method that you can manipulate and adjust to get the desired outcome once you've got to a point where you're happy. And that is pretty much it. That is my point of view on all these different diet methods. Is tracking calories superior? No, it's not superior for everybody. I think it's a very useful tool. I think it's an educational process that most people should go through in order to understand their own nutrition a little bit better but it isn't necessarily going to work for everybody. Nothing is black and white. And like we said, keto, intermittent fasting, low carbs, slimming world, whilst they all have very different ways of approaching the same goal, they all do it by the same method, which is to put you in a calorie deficit, okay? Picture yourself here as somebody who wants to lose body fat, okay? So you're here and you want to lose body fat. Here is the result of you losing body fat. And this middle ground here, this is where you get all these different experts and peoples and influencers throwing in their own methods, their own different dieting strategies to try and get you to buy, to get you to this end result. When in fact, all of these literally just work by putting you in a calorie deficit and that's it. So that was today's episode. That was my opinion on the recent Diary of a CEO clip. That was my opinion on calorie tracking and if it's superior over other dieting methods. And also you got to see what my pull day looks like. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, remember if you like this kind of content, if you want the simple and effective fitness advice to help you focus on what matters for getting a result for making a change, then please drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, keep up to date with everything that I'm putting on so that you don't miss anything that's coming up. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.